here is the code that we worked with last time, right? And the program worked out okay after we fixed it, right? There are a few little issues here and there with it. So the main issue that we ran into is we were missing a curly brace, right? And it's really easy to accidentally leave something out or to miss something when you're working with plain text instead of a code editor. So a code editor is a really great thing to use and we'll actually look at one and talk about a little bit more of why and show the example for that. Now that wasn't the only issue that I had. And there's actually still a few errors in here still. I'm missing a few semicolons. Now web browsers are actually really nice interpreters because they will try to run things even if you mess up, right? But they do have a hard time when you're missing a curly brace. But for semicolons, they'll typically run it still anyway, but you should obviously try to do it properly. Now, there was more than one issue. One, I wasn't using code editor, so it was easy to make errors. But the other thing too is I didn't really plan this, or I did plan this, but I didn't work according to my plan. Instead, I sort of worked through this trying to keep it more simple for someone who is maybe less familiar with JavaScript, right? So I do actually have my plan over here that I sketched out and sort of a flow chart, kind of the start and then some of the different options, right, that you go through. Um, and this is really how I should have coded it. Now, I wasn't going to start with this. I was actually going to start with this. And this is basically what I coded, right? But if I had started with this framework and tried to code from here, this would have worked better. Instead, I coded kind of like the way that the player would move through the game, including actually typing the text. And adding all that text in there did actually make it a little bit harder to check for errors, right? So if instead I had just used maybe just a short bit of text and then replaced it later, that probably would have been easier to see for errors as well. So here I could have had this just say intro, and that could have said sword, play, I don't even need that alert there because it's not on here, right? Here we have live, here we have die, and now it's much easier to see the code, right? We don't have all that extra text, and this would have made it a lot easier to check for some of those errors as opposed to sort of parsing through the code with all of the text in there, all the story in there. Now let's look at it in a code editor. So, so the code editor that I'm going to use is Atom.io. I recommend you go ahead and uh, grab this if you don't have it. There are others. You could use something like Brackets, which is a free open source editor that was made by Adobe. If you want something maybe uh, a little bit fancier with a few more tools, maybe you get something like WebStorm. WebStorm is made by JetBrains. Um, and it's a full ID and it has a lot of different tools. WebStorm is not free, but Atom and Brackets are. And so I'll be using Atom because a, it's pretty good, and B, it's free, right? And it also works well with Git and some of those things, which is a good thing to work with and play with if this is something that you're really interested in. So you can download it, install it, etc. It looks like this. Now I'll go ahead and close this tab and just have the workspace here. And then I'll go ahead and open up my file. So you can see here, this is a lot easier to read. And even if I still had that big mess over here that I had before, right? If I want to paste that in here instead. You can see here it's still a lot easier to read. And if I delete this curly brace, like the error that we had last time, you can see right there where all the script gets a weird coloring, right? The, the syntax highlighting isn't matching up. So that's an easy way to quickly see also uh, sometimes where that error is, right? If all of a sudden the font gets weird, then we know there's probably an error somewhere around there. Additionally, it also does the spacing on these for me too, as opposed to just a plain text. This text is like way over there, right? We don't have word wrapping on. So without word wrapping on, this is actually a lot easier to see the structure of the code. Of course, when you actually want to write all of your text in, then it's not so uh, useful, right? So, but um, that's not a big deal. You can toggle word wrap on and off pretty easy. So if we go up here to help and we type wrap, let's see, there it is, toggle soft wrap. So you just go under view here and toggle soft wrap. 
right? So that makes it a whole lot easier to edit the strings that I included in here, right? Okay, so that's looking at our code just quickly in a code editor as opposed to just plain text. And then uh, in the next video, let's actually add to it.